Have you seen that thing from the Smithsonian? Yes. <laughs> Before I even explain. Yes. <laughs> but let, let's let's break it down for the Please, audience. Please, Tim, break it down. Where it's like scheduling is whiteness and like being on time and working hard, saving for the future. I saw that and I thought to myself, uh, for those who aren't familiar, like the Smithsonian had this chart where it was like a graphic explaining that, like I said, working hard is considered a, a, a trait of being white. I'm like, wow, white supremacists would completely agree. Huh. But what I, what I thought when I saw this was, have they never been to like an African country? Like people have jobs, people have schedules, people work hard, people save for the future. They're racists. They literally yeah. think that like these countries in Africa that function, that have employees and businesses and that are predominantly black, don't have schedules? Yeah. Don't save money in a bank? Also, you have to imagine that the, whoever created that, that poster, I'm sure they had to meet a deadline at some point. <laughs> you, you know, they, 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 had to, they had to be able to compose, uh, uh, compose their sentences properly and make their points. You know, it, it's... It, Follow their, 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 their schedules. Their, their, their schedules. It's, it's this... Um, I mean, I had an argument uh, with one of my Harlem roommates, actually, and, and he actually was mad at me. I, you know, I was talking about striving for financial success. He was like, he's like, man, that's just... He reacted, he's man, that's just another way of striving for of trying to be white, man. And I was like... There's a lot of Nigerian and Japanese businessmen, I think, who disagree with that notion. <laughs> you know, yeah, but man. but how but how sinister is it? How insidious is it that these people who claim to be fighting on my behalf say that anything that you could possibly do to improve your life means that you are not really who you are? You know, it's it's it's. I, and people and people can't see it because I mean that's the power of I don't know the the leftist brand the Democrat brand whatever you want to say but you know I mean I left the Democratic Party two years ago because I began to say you know what these people are not they're not in my corner they're telling me all these things that are going to lead to a terrible life and a life of of dependency and and insecurity and yet they still want me to vote for the politicians that are pushing forward these same things you know and you know I I I, I shudder to think of how much money I could have right now if I just just decided to say, you know what, everyone's racist, and and I'm a victim, and um, and donate give, to give my me, PayPal. <laughs> exactly, yeah. give me a book deal, or you know, or you know, Nike, please give me money. McDonald's, please give me money. You this, know, this, this is the funny thing about when they say like grifter and all that stuff. It's like, dude, do you, like you realize the corporations support the leftist narrative? If I wanted a big sponsorship from big brands who paid big bucks, and I was really intending on grifting people, I'd just be a leftist. Yeah, that's like all of these major brands change all their logos to rainbows and, and you know candy canes and all that stuff, and I'm I'm sitting here. I'll, I'll be honest; it's not like this show is like far right conservative or anything like that. But I it's just not. I just no, sir. Apparently not. Apparently not. No, then right. what am I doing here? Right down the middle. <laughs> I mean, that's the Getting funny the thing bullseye. too. It's like the, the centrist doesn't exist to any of these people. No, it's, no. It's funny. So like, I I, I have uh, uh, you know some descriptions of me say Tim Pool has been variously variously described as left wing and right wing. It's like maybe it's because I'm a centrist. <laughs> like they, they, like we we some I think there are some things conservatives got right. I think they're the ones standing up for free speech for the most part right now. Mm -hmm. You definitely got conservatives who are pro-cancel culture. They'll say they aren't, but they would they, they would want to cancel people if they had the chance. Yeah. For the time being, there are more moderates and conservatives who are saying, hey, don't ban speech. The left, the neoliberal left for the most part is anti-speech. Shout out to Jacobin. I know a lot of people don't aren't, aren't fans of them, but for a leftist socialist publication, they've defended free speech for some really abhorrent people saying right. they'll come for us the moment they that you, you let them go for them. So I can respect that. I, I don't care where you are on the spectrum. If we believe in freedom, individuality, you know, self-respect and all that stuff or like a, um, responsibility, I think is just an easier way to put it. Mm -hmm. the, all of that's kind of going out the window these days. Like the whole, the whole idea is that I, I guess on the left, you are, it's a really, it's a really horrible way to live. You are responsible. Let me put it this way. You have to do what the left wants you to do. And if you screw up, it's your fault. You get no hmm. benefits for being an individual. You have no right to work. They create villains to keep you in line. But the moment you make a mistake, then you are an individual. Then they do sacrifice you. Then they do come for you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's, um, I was actually attended uh, what they called a salon. Um, this was in New York City. Um, it was hosted by, by uh, an actor friend of mine, a brilliant guy, excuse me. And um, he showed this video where, where this guy explicitly said, people tend to focus too much on the individual. We need to focus more on the collective. And I was oh like, God. well, yeah. I was very silent during that entire <laughs> affair. People were like, what do you think, black guy? I'm like, I mean, this is one of those things where you had to walk in. They had, they had these, um, 
these bracelets at the door that and you had to put one bracelet on for each mark of privilege that you had so you know if <laughs> if if your if your parents went to college wear a bracelet if you if you are able to vote wear this privilege bracelet you know if if you have a mother Jeez. and a father it's just like there, there's this, this this i mean it's a secular religion man there's all yeah, these like there's self castigation it's just it's 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 so insane to I, me i took the privilege see it i took the privilege test and i scored very very poorly oh i'm sorry tim very poorly <laughs> yeah so it's like it, it it asks you a lot of these a lot of questions are you religious you know, are you white? Are you male? It's like, what's your gender? What's your race? What's your religion? What was your family's income level? And all of these things. Have you ever been a victim of this, a victim of that? And I'm going through it. And it was like, it's, it's like you are very underprivileged or whatever. And I was like, I never knew that. I, I never knew that. Like, I, I guess I understood growing up we weren't rich, but it never mattered. Also, what what is what is the right amount of privilege? You notice nobody nobody ever really dictate or, or or quantifies what that is. You're you're overprivileged or you're underprivileged. But no, what is the perfect amount of privilege that we're that we are allowed to have? <laughs> I, I don't know because I know people. You can't quantify it. That's the problem. <laughs> I know people that were born in pretty much the same situation as me. Strong family and part of like they looked like their surroundings. So like they had that familiarity bias. I'm, I don't even think it's a racial thing. I think it's like if you're familiar with your surroundings, you know. A, a, mm. Someone well, looks like, like me in a in a Brett Weinstein in, in, basically says this. Yeah, yeah, and but they're like losers. No offense to you guys if you can hear me out there and you know who you are. Um, <laughs> but they never made much of themselves. But they had that. They still had that privilege. And then I know people that I had to. I was a huge nerd. I mean, look at me. I, I was like pushed was around in school. <laughs> I would talk like this in school, and people would be like, "You're get out of my," you know, weirdo, much, weird nerd. things. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was hard. I, but I had I had some privilege, but. You have to strive to make something yourself, regardless of what kind of privilege. So the privilege is not gonna is not gonna give you the success. You have to take that. No, yeah. you, you know, you know, I, I read something interesting. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, this guy I know, and he said that he was shocked. He was not that. He said it, it's shocking that we don't teach Juneteenth in schools. And I said, bro, they taught me Juneteenth in school. I think the issue is your school didn't teach you Juneteenth. So I don't know where you went to school. In the city, yeah, we, 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 we talked about it. I, I'm not going to pretend like the school celebrated or anything, mm. but I remember like opening up the book and then reading about you know this history. And I think the issue was like where he grew up in his community, perhaps his community didn't, like there's certain stories and certain things they didn't think were as relevant, so they ignore them. It's not like you're going to teach literally every child, every grade school kid about every bit of history. And I thought it was interesting that he said that because I was like, first of all, it shows you that your experience is... is you think your experience is the world's experience. Mm -hmm. You think because they didn't teach you that I wasn't taught or other schools don't. That's just you, man. Yeah. And it's it's, it's really funny because uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Ryan Long, the comedian. Uh, I know who he is, but I'm not. He's got a new bit and it's brilliant where it's basically a therapist telling the woman no matter what she does wrong, she should tell the world to change instead of her. <laughs> so he's like, when, when she's like, you know, I can't seem to find a good guy. He's like, have you considered writing an article telling men what they can do better? <laughs> But it's a, it's a good point because when I hear people say like, why aren't schools teaching this? I'm like, bro, they do. Not yeah. all of them and not yours. So maybe there's an argument, but then why don't we teach the Holodomor? You know what I mean? Like you choose what you think matters to you. See the problem? I'm not here to, to disrespect anybody's struggles or plights. And I also don't know what, what history is more important based on privilege. Is the Holodomor ignored because it was white people? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The Coalition of Communities of Color said that Slavs, Slavic people are, are people of color now. So does that mean that we are ignoring a, a, a genocide of people of color in the, in the Holodomor by not teaching this to grade, grade school children? Or does it make sense because Juneteenth is literally an American, you know, uh, a holiday in 47 states and it should be more prominent in this country? Well, the, these, are, these are just conversations. Well, yeah, right. So you, like, I work backwards, right? So we were talking before we came on air, you know, I'm, I'm binging a lot of Thomas Sowell right now and, and he goes in on what he calls intellectuals, the intelligentsia, and how they... And, and visions of the world, you know, I think everyone should read A Conflict of Visions to sort of get a grasp on, it's, it's Soul's attempt to highlight the, the roots of the ideological uh, uh, fissures of our time. And he talks about uh, the intelligentsia in terms of journalism and journalists and how they tend to filter out uh, facts that are inconvenient to to their own vision. So you know, why don't we teach the Holodomor? Well, it's it's inconvenient to the, the leftist vision of the world. You know, and uh, and Juneteenth isn't. So they're bringing it up now. And then and then um, talking about who you know they're not they're not teaching this in schools. I mean, I remember there, there was some tweet about uh, um, uh, people like to forget about Emmett Till. I'm like, who is who has not been told about Emmett Till? 
Everyone knows who Emmett Till is. I don't know who is not teaching that, um, teaching that. But it, again, it's, it's like, you know, you're, know. who is it? Are you serious? Yeah. No, see, this is a good point, though. Like, wow. Well, so, so Emmett Till was this kid uh, who basically he was accused of whistling at a white woman. This was back in the, the 50s, I want to say. And he got the crap beat out of him, beat out of him. You can find pictures online of his corpse. It's, it's beaten beyond recognition. You know, they, they, they beat him. They, they threw him in, you know, they threw him in a body of water. I mean, it was, it was awful. It was horrible. But every person I've met, <laughs> except for Ian, apparently, knows that story. And uh, he's, but this idea, like we're not teaching this, is 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 wrong. The last thing I want to say, just working back a little bit, is that Juneteenth, June should be Black History Month. The one stereotype, that, <laughs> the one stereotype I'll, that I will accept about Black folks is that we do not like the cold. They gave us the shortest, <laughs> coldest <laughs> month right? to celebrate and, and, all to celebrate our history. Why June's is that? Nice. And, and that's you, just ridiculous and to the, me. But but even better, when you said June June should be Black History Month, I'm like that is the month of Juneteenth. Like, exactly. It, it makes good, sense. You know. it make, can, I'm launching a campaign right now. No, I'm kidding. Can you guys briefly, <laughs> per, and forgive my ignorance, explain Juneteenth and the Holdemore? Can you explain those really quick? Oh, God. Holodomor, basically, uh, Stalin, uh, lots of policies that led to uh, starvation of millions of Ukrainians. Um, the New York Times, uh, famously uh, under a journalist named Walter Durante, who has an award named for him. And <laughs> this guy later won a Pulitzer Prize, which the New York Times has not rescinded. Wow. Um, he deliberately filtered out, as I said before, the information about the Holodomor. Uh, and meanwhile, there was another British journalist, and I, ah, I, I wish I remembered his name, but he was actually reporting what was going on, and he got smeared and so, you know, impoverished. Long story short, Holodomor was a genocide of Ukrainians. The Soviet Union took all their food away from them, basically, and they all just started starving to death. It's brutal, horrific. And Juneteenth, I've heard a lot about it, but I would love for some clarification. Oh, I've, I've, I don't remember what it is. It's like it's like the emancipation. It's uh, the it's it's essential. It's the June nineteenth, the celebration of the the day. I think I could be wrong. The day the uh, the Union marched in Texas and enforced the end of slavery officially. It was like the last person who was still enslaved got like oh finally. And there's a move to make it a national holiday. So interestingly, in more recent times, 47 states already have it as a holiday. Oh. And I got to be honest, I, I think we should absolutely as a nation celebrate Juneteenth. Yeah, I, re no, I really it's a, do. It's a, it's a significant event. It's, it's Independence Day, man. Yeah, and and yes. I've heard the leftists talk about how it's like, day, you know, we finally said this is the end of slavery. And I'm like, dude, absolutely. Like it was a horror. It's, it's a horrible thing. And I'm all about, you know, more celebrations for America and the things we've done right. So the 4th of July, I'm down. You mean I get another one a month before to celebrate? You know what I'm saying? Do you know, do you know, do you know how much barbecuing is going to happen yes. if we put Black History Month in June? Yes. All right, man. Come on, man. It's, just just make, make it happen. So so Come up, make it happen. That's right. so, 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 you know, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the issue I take with a lot of the critical race theory, a lot of the leftist approach to things is like, I'm, you know, I, I did an hour long documentary on Ferguson and Pruitt Igo and public housing and the racial covenants of St. Louis, systemic racism, institutional racism. And, and you know, when I when I sit down with conservatives and Trump supporters and actually have conversations as like human beings sitting down together to have discussions, we actually come to an understanding of each other's views and politics and understandings. And if there's something like Ian wasn't familiar with Juneteenth, I'm not going to pretend to be the expert. I probably got some of it wrong, but I'll just be like, oh, so it's basically this. So when I talk to conservatives, treating them as humans and good people who just, you know, maybe don't understand, then all of a sudden they're like, oh, oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Like, surprise, surprise, when you actually sit down with someone and have a conversation with them, they'll be like, oh, they may still be like, well, I disagree with these particular points. So the issue I take is we just basically said on this show, Juneteenth should be a national holiday. We should have tons of barbecuing. And the problem with a lot of the mainstream left is that they need the conflict. Like mm -hmm. when you mentioned mm -hmm. your roommate who said, you know, you know, you're just trying to like act white or whatever that was. It's like they've they've created the villain that those of us who are fighting for civil rights and have for a long time and social justice are trying to do away with this idea that people are villains based on race. Mm -hmm. We want to be like, no, 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 people are villains because they're bad people with bad ideas and they want to hurt you. But there are good people of all different races. And there are bad people of all different races. But I think the people who want power in politics and sometimes it's Republicans. I think Republicans have a lot of a lot of faults. But Democrats absolutely love using race as a wedge to drive uh, uh, a, a push for power. And I'll give you a really good example. They complain the Republican Party is too white. It's a bunch of white men, they say. And then when the RNC had several prominent black bunch conservatives, black people. Yeah. they insulted them yeah. and, and called them all the awful racial slurs. And I'm like, so you asked them to do better. The Republicans were like, absolutely, you're right. And then you insulted the people who spoke like, dude. 
I can complain about Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and the, and the weak Republicans. The phrase Republican leadership is an oxymoron. I think everybody who watches know I say this all the time. The Democrats are something else. You know, mm-hmm. I, grew, I grew up in Chicago and I feel it's it, probably one of the reasons why I have a bias very much so against Democrats. I think it should be obvious to anybody. So I grew up in a Democrat run city. I was personally screwed over by Democrats as somebody who was, you know, essentially a liberal living in the city. Mm-hmm. Republicans mm-hmm. didn't affect me in any way. I watch Mitch McConnell and what does he do? He goes, slow down there, Democrats. And then he obstructs <laughs> things. I was talking to a Democrat friend and she was just saying all he does is sit on things and stop things from happening. And I'm like, right. And the Democrats actually do stuff. They do stuff that's either bad for us or they do like or, or they don't do what we want to do and they do bad things. I'll put it that way. Yeah. Like you get Joe Biden. $2,000 checks, everyone says, yes, fine, they agree, and then he doesn't do it, and he goes and bombs Syria instead. Mm-hmm. And again, I know, you know, Donald Trump, missile strikes, drone strikes, all the bad stuff, too. There's a, there's a lot to uh, unpack, breaking down all of that stuff, but ultimately, I really do feel like the Democrats are worried if we actually had the conversation where it was like, oh, I don't really care about race or gender or any of that stuff. I think people are, you know, should be treated respectfully and, and, you know, we should come together and, and fight for common causes, particularly class issues. Oh, that's bad news for them. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that most of us in this country agree on a lot of things. There are some hot button issues like, like abortion, for instance, that are just really emotional and people have very divergent views on that. But I think we agree on more things than we are led to believe. And I say all the time, get off of social media, uh, get off of, don't stop watching the news and just start talking to people. And you'll see just how, you know, when I, when I uh, left, uh, when I left New York City, uh, the, the dystopian wasteland that it's now become, um, and I and I went to a city like Atlanta, and you know I was so heartened by just talking to people who are not in this progressive bubble, who they have they're connected to life in a way that people in New York City are just are just not, and they have concerns that that you know that that New Yorkers just don't that aren't that aren't really they aren't really privy to. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtubecom IRL. Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. where you can leave comments and super chat and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And if you want exclusive members only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.